Hi, this is Luis with Ungodly Design, and today we're building the One Up Keyboard Launch Pad. This varies from our conventional launch pad in that it's made by layered acrylic as opposed to the aluminum housing. So, this is just a more budget friendly option. What you need to build this is a screwdriver and a knife or something to open the box with. So, we're going to go ahead and open it up. So let's go ahead and open this up. So you have your cable, you have your PCB. Uh, you might note there's a little green tab on here. And you This just means it's protecting the OLED itself. You might want to take this off at a later time to prevent smudging up the OLED, the encoder, and the knobs. So this is the knob for the meaty slider, the triangular one. Circular one is the one that goes on the actual rotary encoder. You have your acrylic pieces, of course, and your screws, which consists of two sets of screws, one of them are slightly longer than the other, and four nuts, and then four rubber feet that you can use. So let's go ahead and open this up. So you might see there's some loose pieces in there. I'll show you what those are for a sec. So let's go ahead and open this carefully. So these pieces might already be in order, but I'll go ahead and show you how they're layered. So there's that. Let's go ahead and set this aside. So this is the little lube station that I designed. So, so let's go ahead and set this aside. So these are all the pieces you should have. You should have a total of five pieces, six including the OLED covers. So you might have two. And the reason is one of them is the color of your pad and the other one's clear just in case you don't want the OLED to be shining through as that color. So in this case, I think this one's turquoise. So with the OLED, you'd actually see a turquoise OLED screen as opposed to the clear, you would just see the clear part over here. So let's go ahead and start peeling all this. This piece is probably the most fragile piece in the entire kit, so you want to be careful with this. If you twist it too much, this right here will just snap right off. And although it still works, you'll lose a lot of the structural integrity of the actual layer. So this one you might notice is kind of powdery, and that's because we did some rasterizing lasering so that essentially cuts a certain depth of the laser just to get a little bit more clearance so that stuff you can kind of just wipe off but just make sure to wipe down your counter with a nice wet cloth when you're done just to make sure it doesn't get everywhere So on this layer in specific, you might see what we call just kind of like a little burr. So that's kind of just where like the plastic is kind of like sticking out. So you see these little pieces right here are really fragile. So just make sure not to break them. If you break them, not the end of the world. So on this piece as well, you'll see that it has kind of some of that engraving. And that's one of the issues that we encountered on the first batch of launch pads is that the stabilizers were actually hitting this particular layer. So you can see that we engraved it down to get a little bit of extra clearance. So this particular layer has some uh, branding on it. So you might see these little pieces of papers got stuck on there. Just a matter of just scraping your nail on there and then it'll eventually come off. Last but not least, the bottom layer. This one also has a piece of paper there for all the lettering. I'm not gonna bother taking those off. And there you go. Actually, I'll take this off. So one thing you might notice as you're 
handling all these pieces is you might leave a bunch of fingerprints. And uh, the easy way to remove this is get a microfiber cloth. Don't use a paper towel. You'll scratch up the plastic and scuff it up. But if you have a microfiber cloth, like a lens cloth, put a little bit of rubbing alcohol in it and just clean it right up. Or you can just smear your hands all over it. So let's go ahead and rearrange these pieces in the order that we're going to be building them. So this is going to be the bottom layer, the one that says one up. So let's go ahead and move it that way. And then on top of that, it's going to be this particular layer right above it with the little notch there. And you can see all the USB little notches start lining up. And then the next layer will be this one with all the engraving on it. On top of that will be this one with the little stabilizer recesses. And then finally, this particular piece. And this one you might accidentally put upside down, but the easiest way to identify which way it goes is because it has the ungodly engraving on the bottom. So just make sure that's on the bottom. If, you, if it's backwards, you'll see it's like this, and you'll see that the holes don't really line up. You'll see that this one's a little wider than the other one. So just make sure to flip it over. So that's more or less the whole stack. And then for your preference, you can go ahead and either use the colored OLED cover and the little notch will be on the bottom for the OLED cover and you see these two holes, those would be on the outside. So that would be it. Or you can go ahead and use the clear one. I'm going to go ahead and use the clear one. So let's go ahead and start building it. First thing you want to do is essentially get rid of the OLED. So this actually uses Milmax hot swap socket, so you can just rip this sucker right out. And to install it, you just align the pins right here. So there's four pins and it says OLED on the PCB and just wiggle it and push it in. But for now, we're going to take it out. So let's go ahead and take up the stack and I'm going to move one, two, three layers. So now I'm at this fourth layer with all the engraving on it. And you want to make sure the stabilizers and the rotor encoder are installed if you're going to be using them. But now you have this layer on it, and you see there's this little notch here with all the Milmax sockets showing up. And that's on purpose, so you can go ahead and now and install the OLED, and that's going to rest on this layer. And now that we're ready, we can go ahead and take off the OLED protection. And now we can go ahead and start stacking the next layer, which is again this one with the little recessed stabilizer holes. So you can see it kind of lines up nicely here. If you have it upside down for some particular reason, it won't line up. So just make sure you have it the right way. And then the next layer will be the one with, again, the ungodly on the bottom. So you can see there the OLED still has a nice bit of clearance there. And the last layer will be this particular one right here with the OLED cover. So that's the kit. And again, you could always just go ahead and swap this out. So now let's go ahead and get our screws. So these are the screws. So you have four rubber feet if you care to use them, and then four screws. So the one thing you want to identify is which screw is which. So you can barely see it, but one screw is bigger than the other. And this is a long one. This is two short ones, and these are the two long ones. So they're like one millimeter longer than the other. Barely noticeable, but they are different. So these two are the longer ones. So the tallest part of the case is the left side. So this is where the long ones are going to go. And you may have some difficulty inserting these depending on if all those holes got cleared when you were healing everything else. So you might encounter some resistance, but just slowly wiggle it in. If you're big brained, you can go ahead and grab your screwdriver. And this is a Phillips head. So you can go ahead and grab your Phillips head. So this one. Yep, there you go. So let's go ahead and grab that. And you can essentially grab all your pieces. And instead of pushing it through, you can actually feed it through. And just slowly turn it, slowly turn it. Eventually, you'll start going through all the layers. So now, I'm all the way through. So now, let's go ahead and install the next one. So the other long one goes over here. So let's go ahead and install that one. And again, you can kind of just screw them on. Eventually, they'll go through. All right, now let's grab the other screws, put them in those corners. Oops. So it's all the way in. That's all I really care about. Let's install the next one. All 
So you can see they're flying out. So you might encounter some resistance as you're building it. So now we can go ahead and turn it upside down, grab one of these little metal feet, and let's go ahead and pop it in there. So it may not go all the way in, but as you slowly start pushing it in, we'll see it slowly start sandwiching all the pieces of acrylic. And if it's not aligned properly, don't force it because you will crack the acrylic on the bottom. So let's go ahead and make sure everything's aligned. I felt this go in and now I can slowly snug it up. Same thing over here. You see there's a bit of wobble here that when you go ahead and put your insert on there, you want to make sure it's nice and centered before you start tightening it because otherwise you'll just be tightening it on the acrylic and you might crack it. So again, there's a little bit of wobble there. So kind of just wobble it until the insert goes all the way in. You kind of hear a nice little click. Insert, insert, insert. And over here as well, we go ahead and install these inserts. So I actually spin it backwards a little bit just to get to catch. And then it goes. This one over here. Let's go ahead and screw it in and we're good to go. So let's put that junk aside, put that aside. And if you really want to, just in case you don't scratch up your counter, especially if you have a nice like bamboo top or something like that, you can put these little rubber dots on the plastic, on the corners, like so. And there you go, there's your launch pad. So let's go ahead and finish this particular one up. So although I didn't use the rotary encoder, I do have this triangular knob here. So let's go ahead and pop it on. Just kind of sits there nice and smooth and you should be good to go. They're, these are 3D printed, so you might see some obvious defects in them, like they look kind of warped and some little hairs just kind of pop them off and it'll clean up nicely. There you go. So now, assuming everything's working properly, let's go ahead and test this bad boy. So grab my USB cable, go ahead and grab it, pop it in, it's detected, and there you go. All the colors are going. You should see the little rocket there, and you're all good to go. So this is the loop station. So let's go ahead and show you how to build that. So let's go ahead and put them on. There you go. Put another one on. And if you want it to be a little bit more permanent, I would advise using a dab of super glue. And there you go. So as you start taking apart your switches, you can go ahead and lay the lower housing in there, the stem in there, so on and so forth.